Hi everyone, today we're going to be solving AQA, GCSE Chemistry, Higher Tier, Paper 2. Today we're going to be solving June 2018, Part 1. In this particular question paper, we're going to be solving from question number 1 to question number 5. The Part 2 video will be uploaded and they are all going to be available in a playlist. This question is about chemicals in fireworks. Colored flames are produced because the metal ions present in fireworks. What color flame would sodium ions produce? Sodium ion produces yellow flame. Name a metal ion that would produce a green flame. We know that copper ions produces green flame. If we are talking specifically, then it will be copper 2 plus ion. Some fireworks contain a mixture of metal ions. Why is it difficult to identify metal ions from the color of the flame? It is usually difficult because one, you know, there can in those fireworks usually there are multiple metal ions present and one color can mask the color of the other flame. Flame emission spectroscopy is used to identify metal ions in a firework. The flame emission spectra of five individual metal ions. A flame emission spectra for a mixture of two metal ions. So we can see for calcium, copper, potassium, lithium, and sodium. And then we can see the mixture of two metal ions. Now, which two metal ions are present in the mixture? To find this out, we can see that this line and this line matches. Since this two line matches, all right. Also, this line matches. However, the remainder of it is not available in this structure. So we can say that there is lithium ion present. This mixture contains lithium ions. The other place where it matches, we can see, is that uh, we can see that there is a match in this particular location between here and here. There is a match, and we can also see there is a match between these two and this two. All right. So we can say that there is also sodium ion present. The compounds in a firework contain non-metal ions. A scientist tests a solution of chemicals used in a firework. Silver nitrous solution and dilute nitric acid are added to the solution. A cream precipitate forms. When we add silver nitrate along with dilute nitric acid and a cream precipitate forms, it indicates the presence of bromide ions. Describe a test to show the presence of sulfate ions in the solution. Give the result of the test if there are sulfate ions in the solution. To test for sulfate ions, we will use barium chloride solution along with hydrochloric acid. So add barium chloride. Positive result will be indicated by white precipitate. Methylated spirit is a useful product made from a mixture of substances. Table 1 shows the mass of the substances in a sample of methylated spirit. Ethanol 265, 23.3, methanol, pyridine, methyl valate. What name is given to a useful product such as methylated spirit? Because we have these materials in a fixed ratio, we will call it a formulation. Calculate the percentage by mass of methanol in the methylated spirit. So first of all, percentage by mass. So we have 23.3 and then we are going to add all of the masses. And then we are going to multiply this by 100%. This gives us 7.9%. Methylated spirit contains ethanol and is available cheaply. Methylated spirit also contains pyridine. Methylated spirit also contains pyridine, which has a very unpleasant smell. Methyl violet, which makes the mixture purple, suggests why pyridine and methyl violet are added to ethanol to make methylated spirit. This is mainly to deter people from consuming this solution. So just one use of methylated spirit. So methylated spirit can be used for antiseptic reasons or it can be used as a fuel or solvent. Describe how ethanol is produced from sugar solution. Give the name of this process. Ethanol is produced by the fermentation of sugar and to produce ethanol, yeast is added to the sugar solution and in an anaerobic condition it is, you know, heated so that ethanol is produced. Figure 2.6 shows the part of the displayed formula for ethanol. All right, complete figure 2. So we can see in this figure already two carbons are present. So the second carbon must be connected with the OH group. Alcohol group has a OH group. And the carbon, all right, the last carbon must have two more hydrogen in order to make four bonds incomplete. 
name the gas produced when sodium is added to ethanol. When sodium is added to ethanol, this hydrogen gets displaced. So obviously, hydrogen will be produced. Methanol is used to produce methanoic acid. What type of substance reacts with methanol to produce methanoic acid? The process of going from a general alcohol to a carboxylic acid is called oxidation. So the type of substance that we must add should be an oxidizer. This question is about gases. Figure 3 shows how nitrogen is used in the Haber process to produce ammonia. We can see the nitrogen gas and then a gas X. So in order to produce ammonia, the gas X must be hydrogen. Inside the reactor, they react and then the condenser condenses the gases. However, the nitrogen and hydrogen does not condense. They go back into the unreacted gases and back to the reactor. Only the ammonia, the product gets condensed because it has a very high boiling point. Gas X in figure 3 is obtained from methane. So gas X is hydrogen. Give the temperature, approximate temperature and pressure used in the reactor. The temperature of 450 degrees Celsius and 2 atmos 200 atmospheric pressure is commonly used. The mixture of gases from the reactor cools in the condenser. Suggest why ammonia condenses but the other gases do not. So basically what we're going to say is ammonia has a higher boiling point. Since ammonia has higher boiling point, so anything that has higher boiling point condenses faster. For example, if water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and you are at room temperature 25 degrees Celsius, so obviously the water vapor that boils at 100 degrees Celsius, if it is brought to your room temperature 25 degrees Celsius, it will already condense into a liquid. The Earth's early atmosphere was different to Earth's atmosphere today. Scientists think the Earth's early atmosphere was like the atmosphere found on the Venus today. Table 2 shows the amounts of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the atmosphere of the Venus and Earth today. So we can see the carbon dioxide in Venus, 96.5 percentage of carbon dioxide is very low, 0 0.04. And percentage of oxygen in Venus is 0, whereas percentage of oxygen on Earth is 20.95. The percentages, carb percentages of carbon dioxide and oxygen have changed from Earth's early atmosphere to the Earth's atmosphere today. Explain the processes that leads to the changes. So this is a very good question. First of all, what we need to say is what changes the carbon dioxide, all right? has decreased in concentration, all right? It decreased in concentration on Earth. And what has increased? The oxygen has increased in concentration on Earth. So why did carbon dioxide increase? First of all, when, you know, during the early period of the Earth's development, all right, as the Earth was like more volcanically active at the particular point, water vapor got released into the atmosphere. And when the water vapor condensed, it formed oceans. And the carbon dioxide dissolved in those ocean water. And they produce carbonate rocks, sediments. And those sediments, all right, turned into sedimentary rock and locked up the carbon inside them. Algae and plants, they evolved. And what they did is that they also absorbed the carbon dioxide and used it in a process of photosynthesis and then released oxygen from that particular process. So oxygen concentration increased as the carbon dioxide concentration decreased. Then when those algae died, they basically sink at the bottom of the ocean. They, you know, turned into fossil fuel. The carbon got locked up as fossil fuels for decades. Why are scientists not certain about the percentage of each gas in the Earth's early atmosphere? Because the scientists have very little evidence about what occurred 4.6 billion years ago. A student investigated the colors in three different flowers, A, B, C. The student used the method. The uh, colors are soluble in ethanol, but are insoluble in water. So, you know, ethanol must be used as a solvent, by the way. Crush flower A, add ethanol to flower A, filter the mixture. Put spots of colored filtrate on the chromatography paper. Repeat steps 1 to 4 for from flowers B and C. And then run the chromatogram. The start line is drawn in ink. This is a mistake. It must be drawn in pencil. Chromatography paper, beaker, lead, and water. Water should not be used. Instead, it should be ethanol. Because the colors are not soluble in water. It's already mentioned. The student made two mistakes in setting up the apparatus. Mistake number one, we will indicate the start line is drawn in ink, problem cost, so the ink dissolves. Mistake number two, water was used as a solvent, problem cost, water, you know, in the beaker means no colors will move or dissolve in it. 
Now this shouldn't set up the apparatus correctly. We can see how the inner experiment is set up. We can see C is a mixture of two colors. B is a pure color. A is a pure color. Neither A or B can be found in C. Give two conclusions that you can make about figure 5. So the conclusions that we can write. The flowers have no color in common. A and B contain only one color. C contains two color. And the color B is the most soluble because it travels the highest. Color A has a RF value of 0 0.65. Color A moves 3.2 cm. Calculate the distance moved by the solvent. We know RF equals to distance moved by A divided by distance moved by solvent. So when we're going to do distance moved by solvent, it's going to be distance moved by A, which is 3.2 divided by RF, which is 0 0.65. So it's 4.9 centimeter. Sodium thiosulfate solution reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid. The solution becomes cloudy as the reaction takes place. Sodium thiosulfate plus hydrochloric acid, sodium chloride, sulfur dioxide, water, and sulfur. Explain why the solution becomes cloudy. The sulfur that is produced is going to remain as a suspension, all right? And that is a precipitate. And what it does is that it prevents water from passing, prevents light from passing through the water. So that makes the solution cloudy. Plan an investigation to show the concentration of sodium thiosulfate solution affects the rate of the reaction with dilute hydrochloric acid. Your plan should give valid results. All right. So this process wants us to show how the concentration of sodium thiosulfate affecting the rate of reaction with dilute hydrochloric acid. So one thing we must keep in mind that we are not to change the volume or the concentration of dilute hydrochloric acid. We will only change the concentration of sodium thiosulfate, but we will not change the volume of sodium thiosulfate in every experiment. The total volume must be same. So how we are going to write down the answer? We can say like this. All right. We will measure, since they say plan an investigation to show, so we will basically ask this particular process to be done. Measure 20 cm cube of sodium thiosulfate solution. Place the sodium thiosulfate in a conical flask. Measure 20 cm cube of hydrochloric acid. Both measurements are done using measuring cylinder. All right, then, all right, the conical flask is placed between light sensors, all right? And once it is placed between light sensors, all right? Hydrochloric acid is added to the conical flask. The flask was swirled and the stop clock was started. The time for the cross to become no longer visible was measured. Or we can do other things. We can find out the log, all right, that the light transmission over time. And what we are going to do then is that we'll measure the time for fixed volume. We'll measure the time for, for that particular cross to disappear or the solution to become opaque to a certain level. Then we're going to repeat the same experiment using different concentration of sodium thiosulfate and change the ratio of sodium thiosulfate with water volume. For example, in the first experiment, we used 20 cm cube of sodium thiosulfate solution. In the second experiment, we can use 15 cm cube of sodium thiosulfate solution, but we're going to add 5 cm cube of water. Now, what are the things that we must keep constant? We need to keep the concentration of hydrochloric acid, the volume of hydrochloric acid, and always we need to keep the total volume of sodium thiosulfate solution constant. And in the end, the result should be or could be all right, higher the concentration of sodium thiosulfate, the faster the rate of reaction. So it will take the least amount of time. So guys, that's the end for this particular question paper. So guys, that's the end for this particular uh, part of the question paper. We're done with question number five. Guys, uh, you know, uh, can I for the part two? And thank you for watching the video. See you in the next video, guys.